Hey everybody, Jason and Lady here with some show and tell. How you guys been? Um, <clears throat> yeah, so I do have some show and tell. And a couple of quick, quick uh, disclaimers first. So, uh, I don't know if I announced this on this channel, but if you are subscribed to the Hexes and Soldiers channel on Facebook, I did a t-shirt drive and I want to say thank you to everybody that helped uh, support that. All the funds that I was able to accumulate from that have gone to APOPO, A-P-O-P-O. Uh, if you want to know more about that, you can look it up. Basically, <clears throat> it's an organization that trains, get this, ready? It's an organization that trains uh, pouch rats, African pouch rats, and it's in Northern Africa, I believe, to do uh, fine landmines. And you say, well, why, why wouldn't they just use a, a regular mine detector? Um, the rats do it quicker, they're more efficient. Uh, the regular mine detectors pick up everything. So every time you hit metal, you gotta stop whether it's a mine or not. And again, there's, there's a lot more to it. So if you go to APOPO, -O, you can learn more about that. Yeah, that's right, rats finding landmines. And uh, apparently that's a huge problem because people are stepping on them and, and <laughs> getting hurt. So uh, thank you again for everybody that supported that. The t-shirt drive uh, was for this. So each person that paid for this uh, got one of these and Again, all the money went to that organization. So that was very cool. What else? Um, <clears throat> also, I want to remind you, anybody that plans on uh, submitting anything to the Hexes and Soldiers magazine, that deadline is coming up, uh, end of August-ish-esque. So uh, for those of you that were considering doing so or kind of on the fence, time is ticking, running out. Um, get your submissions in to hsgames at gmx.com and uh, if I use your submission you'll get a free copy of the magazine. So that brings us to the main event and earlier today I got this and I've been I know what it is and I've been thinking about it and staring at it and chomping at the bit to open it but no I wanted to wait and share this with you guys uh, came home, did everything I need to do. I'm all fed and watered. Had some nice uh, couple glasses of wine. So here we go. Uh, I guess a knife would have helped. <clears throat> Let's bring you down here so you can see what I'm doing. The cat wants nothing to do with this. I tried to incorporate her in this vid. Unless she has little foam peanuts, then she's interested. Shouldn't I use scissors to do this? Ooh, no foam peanuts. Yeah, you ready? Yep. We got this. Finally. It was one of the first pre-order this when I saw that it was available. This is a historical advanced squad leader module. And um, it should be awesome. Let's back of it. <clears throat> Uh, just quick background on this operation. This is uh, January of 45 and Operation Nordwind, which I'm a little less familiar than uh, other operations, but uh, the German offensive in France's Alsace province enjoyed only limited success in its first week. German fortunes changed, however, with the penetration of Panzer Corps, the American Maginot Line positions during a pre-dawn attack. This assault shattered Companies A and B of the 20, 242nd Infantry Regiment and left Company C and D deployed in Hatton itself as the last remaining infantry units opposing the Panzers. Both sides conducted early morning probes, during which it became clear that the Germans enjoyed local superiority. By midday, the full force of Kampfgruppe Huss 
Panzer Grenadier Division 25th had been gathered to launch against the defenders of Hatton, Huss. You know what a Huss is, Frank? It's a pig that don't fly straight. Uh, and then we go 14th of January, 45. After five days of fighting, both Hatton and Rittershofen had largely been split in two, with the Germans holding slightly more of the most prominent positions. Many buildings had been rubbled, burned to the ground, or suffered significant structural damage from the constant close-range tank fire and incessant artillery attacks. The American 14th Armored Division continued to flex its muscle with attacks made along the key roads toward the main church. Its goals differed little from before as the Americans sought to cut the German supply road between Hatton and Rittershofen and to gain control of key building locations. Despite repeated days of fighting, the Germans were far from complacent in response after German defensive lines began to bend. Counterattacks across the line were ordered with support by tanks of Flamm Panzer Company 352. Now you know. The strength is off. No turning back. Alright? Ooh, a lid in the box. Heading in flames. Thank you for your purchase. Thank you. Heading in flames rules. That would be these. So the rules here, not counting. Ooh. So you can do a campaign game. I'm looking at charts that you can use for that. Uh, other than the charts, you're looking at 10 pages of supplementary rules. Some stuff may be familiar uh, to those that have come across it before. And as I said also, you've got uh, a little setup sheet. One, two, looks like four charts for the campaign game, five. Which is cool. Counters these guys. Plus, 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 plus. Ooh, divider. Campaign game force organizer. Germans and American. And we'll wait on this. Hat and Flames campaign game force organizer. Another one. Very nice. More counters. All right, here we go, ready? Look at that. Steeple counters, which is cool. Then we have roughly the same amount of armor for each side. The usual, nothing new. I'm just gawking, sorry. But that's what you get there. And then a scenario, so we're looking at, uh, <clears throat> why is that? Interesting. Eight, eight scenarios. Uh, scenario one is Black Day in Hatton. Six turns. That would be this one. We have Bertoldo the Brave. Seven turns. So, so far, none of these use the entire map. I'm guessing one of these will, probably the campaign game. Uh, number three, first timers. Right there. Number four, Lair launches first. It's like some of these, the images, just, just, this means nothing, but some of these images are grayscale. Some of them aren't. I wonder if that's an oversight. I don't know if you can tell on the camera. That's interesting. Uh, where was I? Before, still no entire map. Then we have Graveyard Shift, scenario number five, which is six turns. None of these are very long, which is fine by me. Number five. Uh, number six, Jackpot Jones. I remember him. Oh, okay. Number seven, gotta get out. This is 
there. Five turns. This is probably the, I think the shortest one of all. And number eight, Fahrenheit 352. The temperature at which what burns? I guess I'll find out. Any guesses? So there's the scenarios, and then uh, lots of armor, which I have a love-hate relationship with, so looks like I'll be brushing up on my armor rules, and that's fine, I, you know, I, I need to get more savvy with the armor. And this is, this is a historic moment, and I'm not exaggerating, this is the first official winterized, official MMP product map. And we're looking at two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, about 12, eight and a half. If you were to put uh, eight and a half by 11 sheets of paper, 12 of them together, that's what size wise what you're looking at. The hexes look a little bigger than what I'm used to. I don't know if it's quite Dassel, Deluxe ASL, but uh, definitely bigger. That's fine. I'm all for it. But that is awesome. The first, and it's paper, it's not glossy, it's not cardstock, so you're going to have to take care of this for the last. Oh, we, have, uh, we have some names, we have some street names for other features. We have the church, Eglise Saint Michael, or Eglise Saint Michael, and uh, well, a graveyard. Gera de Houghton. Man, this is going to be awesome. There it is. So now you know what to expect. Whether or not you want this, uh, I'd say go ahead and get it. It wasn't expensive. It's not overly involved, but it does have every scenario in here has armor involved. I didn't check OBA, uh, but Again, the scenarios are going to be involved, and they're not very long. Eight scenarios plus a campaign game, so uh, highly recommend it. And I haven't even played it yet. Yes, I recommend it. So that's that. Uh, well, the only other thing I guess I have to share is I've been doing some, uh, maybe I can take you over here, well, Sassel stuff. This would be the Sassel. So we have... What do we have? What's the best way to do this? This way. Can you see this? Jeez. So this would be my third scenario. The first one went great, and that was the scenario one uh, included in the solitary ASL. Scenario two, I think, was pockets. I didn't much care for it. In fact, I didn't finish it. Um, this is mission seven, block party, as you can see over here. And it is a city fight. Americans rolling in, Germans holding out. And uh, I've got everything set up, ready to go. And it's a real interesting system as far as setting up these, these guys here. Um, you're gonna draw lettered shits. And it'll tell you how many you draw. And then that tells you where, uh, say you draw an F, an L, and R, then you place them on those lettered rows. Then you roll a num uh, one die six, add two, and adjust for where the actual lettered shit is placed. Then you roll again, and that determines the hex radius out from out which you place these suspect counters. It's a little bit involved, but again, I, I tend to like doing that stuff, so yeah. I'd like to do another video on this uh, soon at some point and share with you exa just exactly how I'm doing it. But I think that's it for now. So uh, until next time, I'll talk to you guys later.